This is my second time trying to film this. And today, I don't have any makeup on. I didn't grab coffee like I wanted to. Um, and I thought of making some coffee, but my son, who was one, is sleeping. So I figured, don't make coffee, try and film this. Um, so I guess this is, this is real life and this is how I'm going to film. I'm not perfect. I'm not um, able to set things up every day the way I want to. Um, but before November ends, I wanted to talk about um, Adoption Awareness Month. Um, it's special to me because I am adopted. Um, I was also adopted in the month of November. Um, and I just thought it would be good to kind of let people know who I am since I haven't really done anything um, when it comes to me personally. So um, just a little background, I was adopted in Manila, Philippines. I was nine months old. Um, and from what I know, my birth parents had left me at the hospital after three days after having me. I'm not sure why, no one really knows why. The hospital tried contacting them and they were not able to find them. Um, so then a nurse at the hospital knew about this Lutheran um, adoption, I don't know if it's an agency or just like a building, maybe it's both in one, um, and they are still around. They're not that far from the hospital I was born at. And then I was adopted nine months later um, by a family that were missionaries in the Philippines. For me personally, it's taken me 30, 33 years to really kind of know how to say what I want to say. Um, I have struggled with abandonment issues like why did they leave me at the hospital did I do something wrong was I sick or something and they couldn't afford me was it because I was a girl um, and they needed a boy um, for farming purposes or whatever um, and then um, I also grew up in a white family um, my three brothers are from my parents and then my two other sisters are adopted. Um, so that, that made it easier for me that I did have two sisters that looked more like me. Um, and then uh, we came back to the U.S. when I was six, I believe. So I've, been, I've always known English and I only have a few memories living in the Philippines. So um, since then, um, I didn't really know I knew I was adopted for forever, um, but I didn't really click in my head that that wasn't uh, a normal thing, especially for uh, being non-white in a white family, um, until I was about eight years old, and I had gone to school, and someone thought I was African-American, because I'd never seen an African-American, I don't know, I, I think it's just... Crazy. This was back in the early 90s, by the way. And so um, with that, I, my dad had to come in and he had to kind of talk to people about um, who the Filipino people are, um, what they, what kind of, um, like, how some of them live, like, in small villages because my mom actually grew up in a small Muslim village and so then people thought there weren't any hospitals and that we all lived in huts and it was just a crazy mess um, but I did what's great about it is that I did um, grow up with Filipino food um, I would go to Filipino festivals I um, my mother kept Muslim um, like memorabilia, I guess, um, from a village that she grew up in, in Mindanao. Um, and that was back in like the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, so anyways, I, I am now at the point where 
I'm more comfortable with it. Um, yes, I still have those questions. And yes, some days are worse than others. It's not something I am constantly constantly thinking about. Um, since I've had children, it's helped me heal more um, when it comes to being blood related to my family because now my family is um, my family is made up of people who look like me and I could see not just physically but I can see myself in them when it comes to personality and whatnot not that I don't love my adoptive family I think they're amazing um, I would not choose any other family um, not that it was a perfect family, because it wasn't, um, but my brothers are my brothers and my sisters are my sisters. And um, and when it comes to my sisters, we all look at adoption differently. So um, what I'm telling you is my own experience and how I feel. I cannot speak for anybody else. Um Oh yeah, so I do want to make it clear that I do definitely love my family. Um, I I love that I was able to grow up the way I did again with with some not so great stuff. Um, my parents are divorced, uh, so other than my brothers and sisters, I also have some. A half and two step but um, and then I lived all around the world as well um, due to my parents jobs and everything so anyways I wouldn't trade it for anything else it's helped shape me for who I am today and I don't know if any of you have questions about adoption or um, what it's like maybe living in a biracial family when it isn't like a, by choice like my husband is white so by choice I we both decided to marry each other and have um, uh, children but when it comes to being adopted um, it is a little difficult for it was a little difficult for me because I would, when being introduced to people, it would be very apparent that I was adopted. It wasn't like, hmm, I wonder if. It was more like people would say, oh, you're adopted. Um, do you know your birth parents? Uh, do you want to get to know them? Do you want to find them? Um, what is it? How, how do you feel? Because I grew up Christian. I am Christian. People would say things like, how does it make you feel to know that um, we're adopted in Christ and you actually are adopted? And it's like, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. Um, and I was asked that when I was a teenager. So just different things. Um, I have cried. I have been angry. I have been frustrated about things. I have wished I have I looked like my parents so I wouldn't have this... Um, feeling of not belonging and it's not that they didn't tr it's not that they treated me like I didn't belong it was the fact that I felt like I didn't belong at times mainly because of um, what I looked like um, uh, sometimes I wished I wasn't so apparent that I was adopted because my dad is 6'5 and he's from Texas and he's white and um, sometimes I was just like, man, I just wish I would look more like my dad or something, or if I was even half white, at least then I could come up with something instead of always explaining to people. Like, I felt like people always wanted me to explain to them that I was adopted and wanted to get all personal in my business about all that, things that I hadn't even wrestled with um, as a kid and as a teenager. But now it's it's much easier for me. Um, I do one thing I do wish is I wish I had my medical records um, back in the eighties. Um, I guess they just didn't require it, and so I had um, 
I've always wished I had my medical records. It's something that I always have to tell doctors whenever, every time I go to a doctor's appointment, every time I had my um, children, they would always ask me, what is your medical history? Does cancer run in your family? Does this run in your family? And I always had to have just these blank pages of N.A., I'm adopted, I have no idea. So I wish I had that. I wish um, I had a picture. I would like I would like a picture, but I don't know if I actually would want to meet them. Um, I have known friends who have met their birth parents, which they had a horrible experience, or they had a great experience. It's not in, usually in between. Uh, so and at this point, it's kind of like I don't need to know them. I just I just like to know what I look like. I, I would like to know if I look like my birth mother or my birth father or a grandparent. I'd like to know if I have siblings, um, cousins, whatever. I don't, I'd like to know if anybody has passed away. Um, but mostly it is uh, medical records because now I have my own children. And when my children are asked, especially when my daughters have their own children, they'll ask, oh, does this run in your mother's side? And guess what? they'll have to put blank. Don't know, my mom's adopted. And that's going to have to run for the rest of my life and their lives, the lives of their children, unless um, someone, myself or my daughters come down with or ha end up having some sort of medical emergency or medical condition and that's how it'll be wrapped up into paperwork um which of course i don't like that to happen um anyways i don't know if any of you have any questions um my husband did tell me that i have or he's going to get me um, a dna test which i'm really excited about i've watched hundreds of videos about it i um want to do the 23 and me mainly because I think that'll be better for being Asian. And then, um, because I believe Ancestry.com is good, but it's it connects people more with people who have family in the U.S. So adoptees who um, were adopted from here in the U.S., I think that's great, that's perfect for you. But for people who, for Americans who have been brought into the U.S., are, are adoptees who have been brought into the U.S., I think it'd be better to do the 23andMe, unless someone knows of DNA testing specifically for specific countries. I think that would be really nice if, like, the Philippines um, had a DNA testing specifically for Filipinos, because then you can gather more information about um, families and blood types and um, the Philippines is made up of a lot of different um, races, so it'd be nice to kind of be even more precise. Um, me specifically, I do want to know um, what I am because that'll just help me kind of kind of round out my adoption um, story because then I can be like, I can tell my my children, oh, I am this, 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 and this. So anyway, so if you have any questions, if you want to know what I find out about my DNA genealogy once I get it and then get the results back, let me know. Comment below. And um, if you have more questions about me or um, about adoption, um, definitely comment below and I can do another video for you. I hope you have a great day. Go out, get a coffee because I really need one right now, but I can't make one because my son. So um, go have a coffee, get a friend, talk, and have a great day. All right, bye.